Today I've come to Whittingham Lake to take part in the species race. This was a race uh, invented by uh, wildlife biologist Christina Lynn and future ecologist and I'll leave a link to their channels down below. Uh, we give ourselves two hours time limit and we see how many species we can find in that two hours. Uh, we need to capture them on camera and they need to be animal species so we're not looking for plants today, uh, just the animals, insects, birds, uh, that kind of thing. So I'm going to set myself a time limit of two hours and I'm, I'm planning on walking around this lake three times times and then seeing what kind of time I've got left and maybe explore some of these surrounding areas. So uh, let's get going. There were several bee, wasp and fly species about today, some easier to identify than others, like this buff-tailed bumblebee. I struggled with the idea for this one, maybe a honeybee or a leafcutter bee, but it doesn't really look like either. I'm more confident this is a honeybee. Please feel free to correct any identifications I make in the comment section, I'm not an expert. There are around 250 species of hoverfly, 250 species of bee and around 9,000 species of wasp in the UK. With many hoverflies being excellent wasp and bee mimics, some bees are wasp mimics, some wasps look more like bees, not to mention the bee mimic moths identification can get a little confusing. With such a brief glimpse of this wasp, I really can't tell what type it is, or even if it's a wasp at all. And just to prove my point, at first glance I thought I was looking at some European hornets, but on reviewing my footage I realised these were actually hornet mimic hoverflies. I did see some hornets later on, but I never got them on camera. This is a red-tailed bumblebee. It's a male, and you can tell by the yellow stripe which is absent in females. Moving away from insects now, we'll return to them later. One of the major draws of locations like this for nature lovers are the birds. And we've got plenty to see. By the water's edge, there's a lot of different species, so let's take a closer look. The largest bird on view today is the mute swan one of the most iconic water birds of the British Isles. There are around 6,400 breeding pairs in the UK, but that number increases to around 74,000 total birds with the arrival of winter migrants. All unmarked swans in Britain are owned by the Queen, although she only exercises her ownership on certain stretches of the Thames. There are quite a few swans around the lake today, but even so, they're outnumbered by the geese. The Egyptian goose was introduced to the UK as an ornamental wildfowl species and escaped, and has now established itself with successful breeding in the wild, with around 1,100 breeding pairs, with the highest numbers found here in Norfolk. The grey lag goose is the ancestor of most domestic geese, and is the largest and bulkiest of the wild geese native to the UK and Europe, weighing up to 3.7 kilograms. Populations soar to around 140,000 British breeding birds during the winter, with another 88,000 arriving from Iceland. The barnacle goose is usually only found in the UK during winter, where it migrates from Greenland and Svalbard. Most spend the winter in Scotland, Northern England and Ireland, but there is a small feral population that is resident in the UK all year. Of course, where there's water, you'll find mallards. Lots and lots of mallards. Among the geese and swans can be seen a few black-headed gulls, although these have lost their black-headed summer plumage. Although called black-headed gulls, the plumage is actually a chocolate brown rather than black. The Eurasian coot does have black plumage, with a distinctive white beak and face shield. Interestingly for a water bird, it does not have webbed feet. Instead it has distinctive lobed flaps of skin on the toes, which act in the same way as webbed feet when swimming. The carrion crow is one of the UK's cleverest and most adaptable birds. 
It can be difficult to tell a crow apart from a raven, but here in the east of England, ravens are incredibly rare and are also much larger. The last bird of this video is also the smallest of the day. This is a pied wagtail, a common bird found all over the UK. It's almost, but not quite, an exclusively British bird. Some pied wagtails also nest on the adjoining coasts of France and Holland. Might have to revise my time limit here because uh, we've, I've got less than uh, half the time left and haven't even made it around the lake once. It's a bit bigger than I uh, thought. So we might get around maybe a couple of times. Uh, we'll see how we go. One thing that did surprise me was the lack of butterfly varieties. Today was one of the hottest days of the year and I suspect it was just too hot for many invertebrate species. There were a couple on display, however. By far the most common was the large white butterfly. In fact, it was almost the only species of butterfly visible. It never rests for long though and is very difficult to catch on camera. The gatekeeper is another butterfly I did manage to see. As was this comma. It's a very brightly coloured butterfly, but you wouldn't know it to look at the underside of its wings, which provide it with a very effective camouflage. One invertebrate that was very common was this common blue damselfly. Here you can see two damselflies on what's called a mating wheel. The male grips the female by her neck while she bends her body around his reproductive organs. Taking a closer look at the water's surface, I found these delightful little water beetles. These are whirligig beetles, named after the circling motion on the surface of the water where they hunt for small insects. They have two pairs of eyes. One looks upwards over the surface of the water and the other looks down underwater. Staying with these smaller observations, we have this green shield bug. This is a nymph that is yet to grow into its full adult shape. Also known as a stink bug, it can produce a nasty smell if disturbed. Even smaller was this frog hopper. Again, this is a nymph. The adults are usually brown. The nymphs are more often covered in a mass of froth called cuckoo spit, which protects them. With around 2,500 moth species in the UK, identification of this tiny brown moth would need someone more experienced than me to be confident about. Well camouflaged in the grass, I'm not entirely sure which species of grasshopper this is. It could be a field grasshopper or maybe a common green grasshopper. I'd need a better view to tell. Well, time is rapidly running out, so let's zoom through these last couple of observations. A common snail species. A small spider. Last one of the day, this is a pupa of a ladybird. I don't know what species. Well, that's it. My two hours is up. How do they do? I'm going to go home, check my footage, count up all the species. The final total will be here. Well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you want to take part in the species race, make sure you go out, set yourself a two-hour time limit, video or photograph as many species as you can, and you can tag me, uh, Christine Lynn, and Future Ecologist, uh, on um, uh, Twitter. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, all those sort of things. All, all the links you'll need will be in the description of the video. Uh, if you did enjoy this video, make sure you leave a like, leave a comment down below. It really does help out the channel. And uh, join me back next week for another video where we'll be looking for some more wildlife. And I'll see you then. Goodbye.